I had a series of things that happened to me that really compounded my post-traumatic stress disorder. After these events, I was afraid 24 hours a day. I follow MAPS, which is the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. They had posted that they were starting the next phase of trials, and so when I saw that this was a trial that involved MDMA, I was still like, well, if nothing else, this will be interesting. <laughs> la MDMA réduit la peur, augmente la tentation, augmente les sensations positives, ça favorise le processus thérapeutique. I won the lottery in a sense. La MDMA, c'est pas seulement une composante de l'ecstasy pour faire le party, c'est aussi une substance qui connaît un regain de popularité dans la recherche scientifique, notamment pour aider les gens qui souffrent du syndrome de stress post-traumatique. Et c'est pour ça qu'on est ici à la Nouvelle-Orléans pour rencontrer Laurie, une femme qui a reçu une thérapie assistée par MDMA. Ils sont peu nombreux à y avoir accès parce que la MDMA, ça reste illégal. The minute I say that I was in the study, a lot of people will immediately ask me, oh, are you a veteran? And, and you know, and I'm not. This is for people who have survived all kinds of traumas. When I was in my early 20s, my brother, who was two years older than me, committed suicide. He overdosed on pills. And he had come to New Orleans to visit me at the time and was staying at my house when he overdosed. Um, a few years after my brother passed away, my mother ended up in a very bad situation with just her health. She had really suffered for years with bipolar disorder. She killed two people in herself. But to add to that trauma, I was the one who discovered their bodies in her home. In about a year, October of 2006, one of the people that I trusted and, and really did love, I was raped by that person. It was just, just one event after another that happened to me. And months and months ago, when I was really still affected by my PTSD the way that I was, I would remember that I would hate to close my eyes because I would be just terrified when I opened them, someone would be standing over me to hurt me. And it became so normal that I just assumed like, well, everybody thinks if they close their eyes, something bad's gonna happen to them. And if they don't, they're foolish. I was told I was depressed, so I was put on Paxil, then I was put on Prozac. I was told I was anxious, so I was put on Clonopin and Xanax. I was told maybe I had ADHD, so I was given Vyvanse. I tried, you know, yoga, acupuncture, rolfing, Reiki, <laughs> meditation, you name it. I've tried all these things, and I tried to believe that maybe the next thing would be the thing that would work for me. But at the end of it, I still was me in the sense that I was still afraid. The idea of going into this is for me to feel that horrible feeling and to know that I'm going to be okay, right? You were going to process it so. Yeah. On the days that I would be given MDMA, I would be with the therapist team, it was male and female, and they would be with me for eight hours where I would be under the influence of MDMA and really working with them. The other times would be before and after would be these integrative sessions. <laughs> when you're under the influence of the MDMA, first off, you feel good. There's a release of oxytocin, so you have this wonderful love hormone going through your body. But at the same time, the way that it works on the brain is it's really slowing down the amygdala, which is usually an overdrive, so you're less afraid. It also is going to help the hippocampus. It's going to stir up more of your memories there. L'étude est coordonnée par MAPS, une organisation à but non lucratif, et elle entame la troisième et dernière phase en s'arrêtant dans 13 villes américaines, israéliennes et canadiennes, dont Montréal. Le syndrome de stress post-traumatique est vraiment un, un syndrome de, de peur qui ne s'estompe pas. Les thérapies montréalaises sont dirigées par le psychiatre Simon Amar. Santé Canada a exceptionnellement accepté que la MDMA soit utilisée pour mener ce test clinique. La thérapie peut être très efficace, mais le problème, c'est que Vu qu'un des symptômes, c'est que les gens ont très peur et ils évitent. Souvent, ils vont commencer une thérapie, mais ils vont, ils vont l'arrêter dès qu'on dès qu commence à, à, à se rapprocher au traumatisme. Ça devient trop intense. Ils sont surpassés par leurs émotions. Pendant l'expérience de leur MDMA, ils vont souvent avoir des émotions plus positives, de la compassion, de l'amour, tout en étant capables de retourner, de revisiter leur traumatisme. Et on pense que c'est ça qui leur permet de, de guérir.
you actually are able to maybe recall things that you haven't been able to before. So for instance, for me, revisiting the situation that happened with my mother, I was able to go into that memory and there had been details about it that for my life since it happened, I could not recall. And I was mostly able to have empathy and forgive myself because there was a huge part of me that always thought like, this is my fault. I could have prevented this. I can't imagine PTSD presents in people in several different ways. And for me, one of the ways that this presented for me with my sexual assault was that I would be, if I was with, you know, a partner and we were making out and I was aroused, I would be touched a certain way and immediately I would feel afraid. In our therapy, we had discussed, is there anything that would trigger that feeling in you? And I said, well, yeah, there are certain yoga poses that I do that if I go into these physical poses, I immediately go into a state of panic. Is the plow and shoulder stand equally triggering? Usually, yes. And I believe it was Ray that said, hey, why don't you see how you would feel if you went into one of those poses right now? It is immediate. I am just overcome with just shame and fear and anxiety. It was just this catharsis, and I was like, I just need you to hear me. I just want someone to believe it. <laughs> and Sherry's there with me, and she's holding my hand, and she was like, we hear you, we believe you. And it was just amazing. I felt like, like I just felt like something just almost like leave me, like a weight I was carrying, it was like that. Souvent, les nouveaux traitements qui sortent en psychiatrie, il y a beaucoup d'excitation et d'espoir, et on se rend compte plus tard qu'ils n'étaient pas aussi efficaces qu'on pensait au début. Je pense que même avec, avec cette prudence, c'est un traitement qui, qui m'excite, qui m'inspire, qui a le potentiel d'aider les gens à guérir. Donner euh, de l'MDMA à un patient, est-ce qu'il y a des risques euh, que cette personne-là trouve un certain réconfort dans la substance? Ce que les études ont montré à date, c'est que quand on donne ce médicament ou cette drogue ou on travaille avec deux thérapeutes, les gens n'ont pas envie de, de, de reprendre ce, cette drogue dans un autre contexte. L'ONG MAPS espère qu'une fois les essais cliniques terminés, la Food and Drug Administration et Santé Canada autoriseront dès 2021 l'usage de la MDMA limitée à des fins thérapeutiques, donc encadrées et pas en vente libre. Des résultats préliminaires publiés l'an dernier dans un journal scientifique révèlent qu'un an après le début de la thérapie, 67 des participants ne répondaient plus aux critères du diagnostic de stress post-traumatique. Me and my partner couldn't have kids together, so we chose a gay couple to co-parent with. But of the four of us before, I was always the authoritarian one. My whole fear was like, the world is going to steal my son from me at every moment. And that's how I lived my life, with that fear of never being able to even enjoy my son because I was just waiting for him to be taken from me. And after this, like, my five-year-old now says, like, you're so silly, you're the most fun. And that, to me, is like, oh, I don't know if there's anything better in the world than that. Oh, that looks as if it borders a graveyard. A skeleton wearing a rusty suit of armor. I could immediately see a difference in her. And who really could see the difference was Wilder. He always had a good mom, and I always had a good wife, but we pretty much had a sad person pretending to be a good mom and a good wife. And now we just have somebody who's relaxed and enjoying being who she is, instead of having to pretend to be this well adjusted person. I finished my last session with them coming up on a year now. Right now I'm completing a book about my experience and I'm hoping to have that published soon because I really want more people to understand that this is a legitimate therapy. You're my little bit at the dude. Mm, you taste so good. You taste like a sweet potato. And while I can't say this would work for everyone at the level that it worked for me, I can say that every single person deserves the opportunity to try it. And yet here we sit and we have to debate whether or not MDMA should be decriminalized. I mean, to me, it's preposterous. Here's something that saved my life that I believe wholeheartedly has the capacity to save the lives of millions of people.